punch out. I'm Jason Gilbo, Jay Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J. Clay. Taking a look at tonight's FanDuel slate, 12 games here on Wednesday. And a couple of pitchers up top, but nothing like the night we had last, well, Tuesday of last night, tonight, whatever you want to call it. This morning. This morning. I, yeah, that throws everyone off. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we, we saw multiple pitchers get beat up, I mean, as far as being the races. And tonight, yeah. I mean, a little less lenient as far as the aces go. So a, a lot of bats to really look at here. We've honestly hit a weird stretch in the season where a lot of these aces are working out the kinks. I think we've seen that with Arietta a bit of late. I mean, obviously, Jose Fernandez and Baumgartner um, yesterday morning. Um, so... That's that's always the struggle, but I mean, it is just it's just a weird part of the season. I think it's going to average out, and obviously, um, you just keep going with the process plays. You know, eventually yeah. it works out. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, and it's not like Fernandez threw poorly. I mean, it was wow. just Bumgarner threw poorly. Hey, hey, it's just a matter you. of not paying off the price tag. Yeah, well, whatever. So. It was all bad. It was all painful for me. It was hurtful. Yeah. So, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Giants and Phillies here. Uh, Johnny Cueto versus Aaron Nola. And um, talking about the Giants first, I, I like some of these lefties against Nola. Um, Nola, I mean, hasn't been bad against lefties, but been pretty average against them. Um, and I like a lot of the price tags here of the Giants. Um, outside of Brandon Belt, who who is obviously has some power, but uh, everyone else, I mean, under thirty five hundred, I don't mind here. Yeah, I like these prices. Um, I think you can definitely go with the uh, the Span Pagan grouping. Um, it's super cheap, and against Nola, I mean Nola's just been struggling of late. So um, I think I think pretty much that top three and even that top four is all in play for me. Yeah, certainly, and and I mean at, with the addition of Hunter Pence and Eduardo Nunez and, and kind of getting Joe Panic back as well. Mm. This lineup is very deep to get through, uh, and they do make it tough yeah. on you, especially given you know, especially the right-handers. Um, so overall, I mean, I like the Giants' prices. They're not my first choice tonight, but definitely a team I'll be working in. It's kind of like when you're stuck in the snow and you dig yourself out, and then you just get stuck again. That's the worst. Uh, I don't know what that has to do with anything about what I just said about the Giants. Getting through that lineup. Oh, gotcha. Good point. That's a yeah. good one. Well yeah, done, sir. Good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Phillies, I mean, Phillies were clearly the top option last night, you know, when they scored 13 runs. But uh, here, I don't expect a repeat performance against Cueto. Obviously, they are cheap. Obviously, I mean, you can take a look at Noduba Herrera or Michael Franco, but I'm just looking at the studs, and that's about it. Thank you. Yeah. Oduba Herrera, 2,900. Let's go. Two days in a row. He's pretty cheap. Let's go. Um,. I think you can fire away with him there in tournaments. I, obviously, still not a cash game guy. Any of these Phillies are, none of them early cash game uh, viable. But I mean, I'm okay with that for 29. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think attacking Ace has been something that's come into a more of a contrarian way here over the last few days because it's it's paid off. Um, I don't mind it. I don't I expect a ton of exposure or anyone to really be over five percent there. Um, so it's obviously wow. just a deep turning move. Right. So, uh, Rangers and Orioles next, Kevin Gossin versus Cole Hamels. And, um, you were talking about the Rangers on, on the podcast there and, and because Gossman's pretty damn good against left-handers, um, I'm not really a big fan of the Rangers offense. I mean, if, if I would, I, I would take a look more so at the right-handers. So I, I don't mind a Lucroy or a Beltre, um, Desmond's out of my price range, but, uh, those are probably the only two bets I'd take a look at against Gossman. Yeah, I'm with you. Those are really the only good guys, as you mentioned, sort of reverse splits there. So um, it's kind of tough to tough to go too much exposure against him, even though I'm really excited. I'm like really excited about this lineup, but um, I don't think this is the the one to sort of go all in on them. Um, a lot of these guys are tournament plays, but not necessarily the cash that I want. No, I definitely don't think so either. I mean, it, they're not projected for anything huge. I think it's just more kind of one-off potential, if anything. Not quite that stacking potential just yet. Not not really in that matchup there. Um, sure. As far as the Orioles go, um, I mean, you can you can take a look at some of the right-handers like a Trumbo or a Pierce. Uh, outside of that, I'm not expecting a ton out of this Baltimore offense that really Machado uh, and Jones and Scope aren't that great against lefties either. Right, definitely. So I, I'm just kind of cooling off on the Orioles. Obviously, there is some home run potential, but nothing more than G, deep GPP plays. 
Yeah, no, I wouldn't screw around too much. Um, Hamill's just been really good this year, so yeah. no need. Uh, Mets and Yankees here in Yankee Stadium. Uh, big fan of the Mets bats tonight. I mean, you got to like that short porch out there and right for all those lefties. Uh, you look at Chad Green, inexperienced right-hander, um, you know, given the fact that this lineup is filled with lefties. Um, I'm intrigued with the Mets stack. I'm intrigued with, with a lot of their plays given their price tags. I mean, you could go with uh, the Walker, Bruce, and even Loney. I, I like the two four six stack there. Um, this this is a pretty intriguing lineup in terms of tournaments. I think it's a really nice tournament stacking lineup. I don't think too many people are going to be on them, even with the good matchup, just because uh, the Mets have been really struggling lately. Maybe a Neil Walker. Um, but I, I don't see Bruce's ownership being that high at 52, and I think it, I really like this matchup. Yeah, I like Bruce in the spot. I mean, great park factor for him. Um, a, a really solid matchup. I mean, obviously the price is a little bit high, but I mean, really the full stack. I mean, Cespedes and Bruce aren't priced out of out of that range, especially when you balance it out with other guys like a Walker uh, or another mm -hmm. cheap bat there. Right. So, uh, as far as the Yankees bats go, I'm not intrigued with any of them. Uh, they are cheap. They are going up against Matt's lefty, and the Yankees against lefties have been really awful this year. Um, I, I'm just kind of staying away. Yeah, I don't see the need to do uh, anything like that. So I think we just play mats and potentially cash games and and don't worry about it. Yeah, I'm definitely with you. The Yankees are not on my radar. Um, White Sox and Tigers next, Michael Fulmer versus Chris Sale. Uh, two, you know, above average pitchers. Chris Sale, obviously, you know, an elite guy. Um, I'm not really looking at Tigers bats here outside of more than just maybe some tournament one offs as far as upside goes i mean obviously the way kinsler's hit lefties this year i think he's an intriguing gpp option um i'm not on miguel cabrera he's looked a little bit lost against southpaws um but i mean if you get guys like jd martinez back into the lineup victor martinez i don't mind them ah uh, ah uh, uh. I don't want to do it, but I think I might have to. Like you mentioned, those are good prices. Um, sales been a little rocky of late. So while it is just tournaments, I think Victor Martinez definitely in play. Uh, even a Cabrera in a tournament sense, I'm okay with, um, and Kinsler as well. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely you know a little bit of upside with some of those right-handed bats. And against Sale, who, you know, um, he's not a guy like Kershaw where you completely just kind of fade. You can still make you consider about using one-offs against him. Mm -hmm. uh, as far and, as and I oh, and I mean, let's just say, I mean, obviously you don't trust Vegas with everything, but four and a half runs projected total, and the Tigers are favorites. So, I mean. It's not crazy to think Sale, he doesn't get shelled, but he might. he's probably going to give up a few runs, you know? Yeah, I could definitely see one of those outings where he goes six, seven innings, but gives up maybe three to four. Um, yeah. And, and that's kind of what you got to get. So it's not something that you're jumping all over a Tigers team and going full attack with, but definitely some one-off power. One-off. Right. Uh, as far as the White Sox go, I mean, Fulmer has been, been really solid. Um, I mean, really good against lefties. 270 Woba allowed. 0 0.20 home runs per nine. Um, and even against righties, I mean, very solid. Um, there is some home run potential for righties. Um, I don't mind a, a Frazier, but he's a little bit overpriced for me. Um, Tim Anderson, 2-9, that's about it. I, I don't think there's a lot of potential with this White Sox team. What about our our uh, our bully there, Justin Morneau, at, at, uh, at 28? I'm off. I am You're off? off. Yeah. You're off? All yeah. right. Fulmer, Fulmer's been really solid against left-handers. He's been sharpening that pencil in his uh, pocket and getting ready to uh, potentially, uh, you know, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, no. I mean, 28 for a lefty against Fulmer is okay, but uh, not, really in, not really in on this lineup that much. No, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised the run total sits at where it is. I think it could be lower, and I think it might get lower. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, Pittsburgh and Atlanta. Jeff Locke versus Rob Whalen. Um, you excited about using Matt Kemp here in his new uniform? I am. I mean, <laughs> I am. I like this matchup for him. Forty-eight. I'm okay with that pay up um, as sort of a, a tournament standalone. Uh, not really looking to stack this Braves team. I don't really like anyone else. I mean, an Eric Ibar at twenty-four is okay, but um, beyond that. The Freddie Freeman price doesn't really uh, stir the drink for me. So I think I go Camp, Camp here, maybe an eye bar, 
pretty much dodge the rest. Yeah, I'm really just looking at Matt Camp. I mean, 3,500 is a decent price tag for someone who's just absolutely mashed lefties um, this season. And, and obviously, I mean, coming from Petco to Turner is not a big upgrade um, in, in part, any park factor whatsoever. But, you know, he's definitely shown off some power. Mm-hmm. So uh, as far as the Pirates side goes, um, I don't mind some of the bats there. Obviously, Gregory Polanco and Marte are the most expensive of, of the, the team. Um, it, it usually just drifts between really the outfielders there. I'm not jumping all over them, but obviously I, I think there is some upside. Uh, and I think people are just kind of turned off by the Pirates. So if you hope to kind of hit on that night where, where they kind of go off, I mean, it happens every now and then. Uh, you should be able to catch them at low ownership. Yeah, I'm kind of turned off at this point, too. Um, It's kind of like, how long are we going to keep chasing and how much of a payoff is there actually going to be at the end of the rainbow here? So um, I think they're just more one-offs for now than an actual stack for me. Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement. Um, But, I mean, anyone else, I mean, it's Jace or Kang and players are just kind of the outfielders. Um, I like Kang. I'm not paying up for Marte or Polanco. Um, and we'll see about McCutcheon if he's in the lineup. But I mean, I'm okay with McCutcheon. So I I'd do the one three five there, but not diving into that expensive price for these underwhelming Pirates bats. Yeah, I think so too. So I think it's just more more of value standpoint that you feel a little bit more comfortable taking a shot with. Right. Uh, Royals and Rays next here, and I think this one's very similar to how we viewed Tuesday, where it's not really good good matchup for offense. Um, if I am picking, it's probably going to be with the Rays. Um, I, I don't mind a Brad Miller or Corey Dickerson in this matchup, but that's about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, their lefties are really the only thing they bring to the table against right-handed pitching. So um, I'm, I'm in on Miller and Dickerson. Uh, I think you can play those together and feel pretty comfortable um, in a tournament sense. But, yeah, I, I don't think there's any cash bats in this game, really. No, Brad Miller's borderline uh, at his cheap price tag. I mean, three two is not bad for for what he's been doing. He's kind of definitely stabled out the on base percentage of late. So I, I kind of like Brad Miller at that price tag. Mm. Uh, as That's far as the, the Royals go, uh, I'm not really in love with the matchup. Uh, obviously, Jake Goderizzi. If you did want to pick on him, it would be from the right side. Um, but I'm not really liking any of the, the prices here um, or, or any real potential. No, I'm not really in on on. Uh getting that Royals exposure tonight, this morning, or last night. Uh, Twins and Indians, Trevor Bauer versus Tyler uh, Tyler Duffy. And um, I think looking at the Indians' bats here um, at their prices, I mean, all near 4K, but certainly definitely in play if you wanted to pay down at pitching. Um, Duffy's a guy who, I mean, uh, against lefties, fairly average. He's been better this year. Um, but right, he's, he's really been hit hard. He's been a reverse blitz guy. So I'm curious to see if, if everyone kind of jumps on board as far as the Indians uh, lefties go tonight. But um, they're in play, but I, I'm going to kind of cool it down a little bit, from at least my take. Well, what do you think about Ramirez and Chisholm Hall? That's kind of what I'm looking at there. I think those are kind of the values um, in that lineup and, and in a pretty good spot. Yeah, those are – I mean, those guys I'm always so comfortable with just because of their price tags. Um, it's certainly – they're always intriguing. They're always a good way to get Indians exposure. Um, I like Napoli at 3-9. I mean, intriguing option, especially given the fact that Duffy, ha- Duffy has struggled against right-handers um, and, and has been kind of just merely average against lefties. But obviously mm-hmm. there's still a bunch of potential for this entire lineup to go off again. Right. So. Um, and, and in terms of the Twins, I mean – uh, we can go with Kepler at this stage, right? Uh, 3,400. Uh, definitely like uh, Kenny Vargas as well. Um, I like Trevor Bauer tonight, but at the same time, um, I, I think it's fair to sort of think about maybe getting some twins exposure after the butt whipping they've handed us the last two nights. Or me. I don't know about everyone else, but it's been, it's been uh, a butt whipping. That's for sure. There's certainly some potential for these Twins, especially given up against a flamethrower. I mean, Twins are a good fastball hitting team, um, and there's a lot of good home run potential here. And they're all at prices that I don't really mind. So um, I don't mind attacking Bauer um, as much as I, I feel like there is some strikeout upside with him. But it's just kind of one of those GPP plays both ways um, where there is potential on both sides to really go off. And I guess throw this in the comments. Is Max Kepler the next Joe DiMaggio, Hank Aaron, or um, Barry Bonds? Uh, let us know in the comments. 
<laughs> what company? What company? <laughs> <laughs> that's a random assortment of players, but uh, that's what we're going with. And you can you can't say other. You have to say those three. Yeah, because those are the only three comparisons he he really draws yeah, himself. That's to. the only player comps that I roll with. So <laughs> I, listen, I got a player algorithm that decides exactly what the rightest comps are. So uh, that's what it popped out for me. So that's figured I'd present it to you guys today. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so yeah. overall, I think this game is very intriguing on both sides. I mean, Indians are cash game and GPP playable uh, from both yeah. sides of the plate. I, I'm definitely fine with using them again. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Cardinals and Reds next here. Um, I like some of these Cardinals uh, right-handers. Uh, Steven Piscotti, I mean, he mashes left-handers. 3-5 uh, here, not a bad price tag for him. Yeah, Piscotti, uh, Holiday. Um, I mean... Depending on how you go, you could even throw a, a Yadier Molina in there at catcher. Um, but uh, overall, <sighs> Piscotti's in cash for me, but the rest is just kind of tournaments. If you stack them, you stack them. But I'm not really seeing the, the one-off cash game potential other than Piscotti. Yeah, I think Piscotti's my guy in cash as well. Um, I, I think the rest are sort of, of GPP guys. I don't mind Brandon Moss. Um, he's a guy who has some decent power against left-handers, and, and Reed hasn't really shown anything that that he dominates lefties or even dominates right-handers. And the home run potential for these Cardinals bats is is absolutely huge uh, mm-hmm. in this ballpark against Reed, who just you know continues to give them up. So uh, I don't mind really the front five there. Curious to see what they kind of churn out as far as another value bat that pops up. Um, so you you could be looking at some good value here for the Cardinals bats. Yeah, for sure. Um, and speaking of value, I mean, it's kind of looking like we're going to have some major value at the end of this Reds lineup, um, depending on what happens. But, I mean, there's some there's some minimum price guys down there. Uh, so keep an eye on that, I think. I, I'm not worried about Waka. So in terms of paying up, maybe, I, I think if you want to go Stars and Scrubs, there might be a few guys at the end of this lineup. Yeah, and as far as the top lineup goes, I mean, um, I'm not really intrigued with some of those prices. Adam Duvall at 3-3 is something that I'm always intrigued with, just given his upside uh, and power against right-handed pitching. Uh, so I don't mind him, but outside of that, I'm not really in on a 3-9 Votto. Uh, Billy Hamilton, I, I'll find in kind of a – maybe I'll use him in a better spot. Yeah, um, probably probably not the right night for uh, for a Hamilton uh, move, but uh, Votto Duvall I'm okay with. Uh, Blue Jays and Astros next, Colin McHugh versus Marco Estrada. Um, Blue Jays, uh, obviously look at McHugh um, against righties. I mean, 3-3-4 Woba allowed since last year. Um, I don't mind. I mean, obviously I don't mind Encarnacion at 3-8. I think that's a decent price tag for him. Uh, and the Donaldson price tags kind of come down a little bit. Same thing with Bautista. It's not that pricey uh, to deal with there. Yeah, I don't mind Batista at all. I mean, that's that's super cheap. So as we saw last night, this morning, yesterday, um, Batista and Encarnacion both hit homers. So, I mean, that's always the potential with this lineup. Um, I'm even okay with Donaldson's price. So it is a righty, but I think you can fire away with all three of those guys. Yeah, certainly. I mean, and we look, I mean, off McCullers, who may or may not have been injured from the start, um, and, and he's a guy who – doesn't really give up a ton of, of homers, but McHugh, on the other hand, uh, much more closer to average uh, as far as the rate goes. So I definitely don't mind that the upside there. Right. Uh, as far as Houston goes, I'm not really intrigued uh, with their prices. Uh, I don't really feel I need to pay for a Springer for one where I can go to cores and get Cargo and Blackman at a similar price tag um, against a young right-hander. Um, so I'm just kind of staying away from this Houston team. Uh, in this matchup against Estrada, I think Estrada kind of hands them a, a, a quality start, and they don't have a lot of upside. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, Estrada, I think Estrada is an interesting tournament play. So I don't know how much exposure I'm going to be having to the Astros. Uh, crazier things have happened, obviously. So I'm going to hedge there a little bit, but I'm I'm definitely not going to have a lot of Astros exposure. Yeah, I definitely don't don't think so either. Uh, and there's not really yeah. anyone that. I would even take a shot on like uh, the big three because their prices are down. They're all up. Right. So uh, Dodgers and Rockies, Tyler Anderson, Brock Stewart. I think this night's the much more easier one to kind of target um, as far as, you know, going after these, these pitchers. So 
Um, I'm okay with with really going against both sides, um, but more so I think for the Rockies, um, I like the lefties here, and obviously Arenado, uh, David Dahl, uh, three seven is certainly intriguing. Uh, so I don't mind these guys here against Stewart. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I think we're finally in play again um, with Cargo and Blackman. So definitely fire away with those. They're cash game viable for me at four and four one. Um, I'm okay with our NATO too. Uh, even even the DJ LeMayhews of the world, um, he's been pretty good this year. I mean, obviously not the same fantasy contributor that uh, the rest of the lineup kind of over overrules him and overshadows him. But I mean, with Trevor Story out, he's kind of going to be the guy that I'm thinking about, uh, you know, bumping up a little bit here. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a big loss in the middle of that lineup. Um, I mean, it kind of does hurt uh, a lot of potential. There's a yeah. lot of stacking potential um, that's kind of gone a little bit. So uh, overall, I mean, I think you can look at the front half of that lineup. And, and on the Dodgers side, I'm not really a big fan of the Dodgers, um, even though they are in cores um, uh, against a lefty. I mean, Dodgers haven't been great against lefties. Um, there's a lot of lefty-on-lefty lefty matchups, especially now that they added Redick. Um, I'm just not quite seeing where – the production's going to come from. I, mean, I guess you can still look at Corey Seager and still look at the lefties, but um, they don't have a lot of re- uh, righty bats. Yeah, in that and, and Turner's really a righty on, like he's a righty splits guy. So, um, I mean, I still like Turner and Seager. They are a little overpriced, but yeah, I agree. For the most part, it's kind of like, well, it's a lot of lefty on lefty here. Um I, I'm still going with Turner. Um, I, I like uh, Howie Kendrick as well in the back there. Um, but at the same time, it's tough to really target them at those prices. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I think if I'm paying 4K, I think there are better guys in better spots. But unfortunately, they're not in cores. <laughs> right. So uh, overall, I, I Dodgers against lefties hasn't really been that appealing. So I think if you are, you can still stack the front half in the lineup. It's always in play. But uh, it's not something I'm jumping all over at. Mm-hmm. Uh, A's and Angels next year. Kendall Graven versus Jared Weaver, and, and we kind of laughed at this one on the on the pitching pod because it's really two average pitchers against two average offenses, and, and really nothing more. Um, <laughs> yeah. You look at Weaver. I mean, statistically, he's been one of the poor, you know, pitchers going back to last season, um, and, and especially against lefties, three three nine WOBA, one point five zero home runs per nine. Um, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I still think you can look at a, a Stephen Vogt at three K. Um, and, and kind of give him a look. Yeah, and I mean, um, sort of without Josh Reddick, he kind of is going to slide into that third spot pretty comfortably um, on on uh, righty pitching days. So you definitely like him batting there. Um, I'm okay with Chris Davis as well. But again, I think you just you really have to hedge with your exposure with righties um, against this A's team. Yes, yeah, certainly. And and as far as the Angels side goes, uh, Kendall Graven, I mean, pretty serviceable. He's had a good track record against the Angels. Um, I, I still think Trout sits in a range of outfielders where I'd rather pay up for guys in better ballparks and better spots. Um, and, and I'm not a fan of really any other price tag around um, for the Angels. There just really isn't a ton of fancy production that comes from this team. Oh, and uh, shout out to Rodney, who's just putting me in a body bag on Twitter tonight. Um, it's very impressive. Uh, I got, I got nothing. I got nothing. He's just <laughs> putting me in a body bag. You, you got to take that Kepler, you know, take and just you got to own it. <laughs> like, like there's I, a point where, I like, do. we're the only way you live it down is if you get a Kepler like tattoo. Or okay, well, that's a little extreme. I was thinking an Avi, but. Uh, <laughs> How about a body uh, Abby? That's what the new tattoos are. Oh <laughs> man, right on the chest, oh. right on the sternum. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right there, right in the middle. Anyway, uh, um, anyway, yeah. So just to the tier two, this is just a tier two game. Like it's just, it's kind of like you know, you get the max HD, and then like they're still like solid, like. And we're kind of like you know three twenty, four eighty here. Yeah, it, it's not game. a it's not a good one. Like it could still be a good video, but I'm not going to enjoy it because it's not in HD. You know what I'm saying? No, you're watching it in standard def. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Red Sox and Mariners here. Isashi Wakuma versus Rick Porcello. Um, for me, I mean, I'm not really looking to uh, exploit this game as far as any full game stacks go. 
I'm not really in on any of the, the one-offs here. I think a lot of them are kind of overpriced uh, for the matchup. It's just a lot of ugh, it's, it's a lot of too expensive guys for me in matchups that I'm not quite looking to, to attack. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's just not – again, this is this is a higher upside game, but but as the pitching gets better, the offenses are better as well. Um, I kind of like Cano here, um, and I like Seager as well. Um, are you talking about the Angels? No, I'm talking about Red Sox Mariners. Good, because I wasn't sure if you were still talking about the Angels because I had my mind up that I was going to talk about Cano and Seager here. So – all right, deep breath, Russ. Well, go All ahead right. and talk All about right. it. So talk about I was Seager. correct. I was on the right page. I like these <laughs> uh, these bats. Obviously, thirty five and thirty two hundred. Um, I think you can stack stackable against Porcello. Obviously, that's a tournament move, but I still think it is a viable option. Yeah, I think you're a little bit more on Cano and Seager than I am uh, in this matchup. Uh, Porcello has been pretty solid this year, and obviously. There's always damage to be done uh, with Cano and Seager and, and even Cruz smash in the middle. There's always potential. Um, I, as this game, I mean, you may or may have not known because you, you're not paying attention, but um, no. <laughs> this game, I mean, fairly lackluster for me as far as offense. Um, out of the Red Sox side, I mean, picking on Hisashi Wakuma, I don't really see a ton of production. I mean, obviously, Nortiz always has some upside, but I, I'm not quite sure I'm paying up the price tag. Uh, it, it might be an interesting night to go Ortiz in a tournament just because, obviously, he mashes righties. Um, but at the same time, that price tag is killer every night now. So they certainly make you pay for it. Um, but, I, I mean, I am okay with the righties, um, with, with the Bats, Bogarts, and Ortiz sort of stack if you really want to go all in on this Red Sox team. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a possible option. I, I think it is going to be contrarian. I don't expect this game to really be high-owned at all um, mm-hmm. just because it's not a good game on paper to target. Right. So, uh, that's going to wrap things up with the FanDuel Punch-Out. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.